Hey there, this is Jonathan, and in the following tutorial, we're going to take a look at this interactive Bilbo and try and make them work. So the first thing that I want you to be able to look at is the fact that I have a bunch of different buttons over here. If you click on the button, you'll notice that I've given um, it to the stop hat and the stop or the play hat button, I've already given them instance names. But if you click on other buttons, you'll notice that they do not have instance names yet. And those are something that you'll need to provide. Now, do be aware that I do have text in front of these buttons. So you don't want to accidentally click on the text because you can't give an instance name. You also don't want to click and drag on both because then it's mixed and you can't um, provide an instance name to that as well. You just want to click on the button itself. So that's the first thing to know. Now, the next thing is how Bilbo, the animation, is created. Now, I, I have a bunch of different um, animations that are inside here, and some are on the main level, and some are inside other movie clips. On the main level, you'll see I have the Bilbo body movie clip. Then I have a right foot and a left foot, or this is, yeah, left front foot and a back right foot and a back left foot. Um, and these are all individual movie clips that have already been given instance names. And then we even have a shadow. Most of the animations are inside their own independent timelines, like this one for the shadow. We have the same thing for the feet. Each one is its own independent timeline. That means that we can stop that one timeline and not stop others. Inside the Bilbo animation, that's the body, if you double click, you'll notice that I have a hat, which is an independent timeline. You could double click again, go inside and see the hat animation there. And then I also have a tail. Let me go back. There we go. I also have a tail, which is its own independent timeline. But the body of Bilbo is animating in this particular timeline. So we've got a bunch of different nested timelines that we're going to have to deal with with our code. Let's begin to add our code by going to the um, first button, that's the stop um, hat button, and let's bring up our code window with F9. Alternately, you can go up to window and choose actions up here. Now, since we have that button still selected, the stop hat button, we can go to our code snippets, go to HTML5 canvas, and we want to double click on the mouse click event handler to write our first code. Now, as soon as we write this code, I want you to notice that it automatically created an actions layer for us. And one of the things I like to do is lock that layer. And the reason why is because that way you, you don't put any content on that layer other than code. And even if the layer is locked, you can still add code to it. Then we can hide our snippets because we don't need it anymore. And let's take a quick look at this code. Now, one thing about this code is that... Um, we want to also pin this script. And the reason why is if I click on other things, you'll notice that it takes me off of that code. I can always go back to the top here and see it. But if we pin that script by going over here, now it stays active on that even if I go and click on other items. And I really like that about pinning scripts. Let's now remove all of the extra code or um, comments from our script and take a look at what we're left with. The first part that we have is what's called our event listener. And we are referencing a button that we're adding an event listener to and that the type of event is a click. And then we're asking it to run a function when we click on that particular um, uh, button. So we want to name our functions so we can easily refer to them later on. Since stop hat is our button name, I'd say stop hat would be a good function name. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it so that what I'm binding is the function name right here. And then that has to match the function name for the function below. In this function, what we're going to do is run some code to stop that hat. So we need to find out where the location is. The beginning of this, of locating something, is always to type this. This means start with the timeline that the code is currently on. Since the timeline is the main timeline, now I can click on the object that I want to go inside of, find out what its instance name is, copy that name, 
and paste it after this. So it means starting from the main timeline, go inside of the Bilbo body underscore MC, the movie clip, and now let's find the object inside of there. So I'm going to do a dot, double click inside of my movie clip, and then find the instance name of that object, which is hat underscore MC. And we could just type this in as well. You just want to make sure that it's not wrong because anything that is inconsistent here, if it's not an absolute, you know, reference, it won't work. It won't be found. Um, after you put in the name of your object, you do hat dot underscore MC dot. And now we're going to, we know we want to stop this one. So we'll do stop and we'll put in the parentheses at the end, which tells this to be a function or a method. Now, we're ready to go ahead and duplicate this code, all of it. So I'll copy it all and paste it below. And we're going to change everywhere it says stop to play. So this will be the play hat button. And that will run the function called play hat. And the function here has to be also called play hat. We're making sure that they're consistent. And then we want instead of stop as our function, we want play. Now, since we have two event listeners and two functions, one thing that we might look at doing is just organizing our code in a little bit more efficient way and maybe putting our event listeners with each other and maybe our functions with each other as well. Now, if you're not happy um, with that, you, mean you can put your event listeners below, you can put your functions at the top. It doesn't really, really matter. I like it when I stack them together. I just find it easier to read. Another thing that we can do is if, if you have any spaces here, or you have extra, you know, stuff that's not perfectly formatted or, or you've added some extra spaces, go ahead and get those things out of there. And then I like the function over here at the top right to format the code, and it just reorganizes it a little bit. And you'll see one of the things it does is put the curly bracket up on the same line with the function name instead of being on the line below doesn't really matter. It's just six of one half dozen of the other, but I tend to like it in this format. Anyway, let's go ahead and save your um, file at this point before you go on. And when you save, go ahead and add your name to it. Um, and uh, then we're ready to test this. To test this movie, you go to, to control test movie. Um, there we go. Test, which is control enter. That works. And you'll see that we have now created that output. You click on the stop hat, you'll see the hat has stopped and play hat and the hat is back to playing. So that looks really, really good. We're getting it to work just as we expected. Now, if you're not getting what you expected, for example, let's say that I have something wrong in here, such as I'm missing Bilbo body underscore MC. Then when I test this thing with control enter, bring it back in, if you notice that something is not working, what I would always do is go to your um, inspect panel, go to your console and see what error you're getting. And this one says cannot read property hat underscore MC of undefined. What that means is that there's something that I've typed wrong in that particular um, area right here. And what's happening is it can't find hat because I'm missing the underscore MC from the Bilbo body. That's always important to know how to troubleshoot a little bit. Now, before you um, finish the rest of the file, um, one of the other things that I do want you to do is let's go to the publish settings. So you can click and go all the way to your desktop or to your stage, and you can do publish settings here, or you can do file, publish settings. And one of the things that I like to do is center the stage and you can even make it responsive, which means that it will scale as you scale back your object, which I really like. Now, there's some other things in here about, um, you know, advanced properties, including your JavaScript in your HTML. There's a whole bunch of different things. This is kind of nice because what it does is it gives you one HTML file instead of two. If I look at the folder where it's output the files, here's the files that were output when I published this. And I'm going to take out both of those so I can republish this. And I've included the JavaScript in the HTML. And what this means is that when now when I hit OK or publish, 
or I do control enter, same thing. You'll see that my animation now is in the center. And if I scale this window, you'll see that it scales the animation as well. Really, really like that. So it, it's now become a responsive animation. And if I go and look at my code, you'll see now everything is in one file instead of it being um, in two separate files. Just something that's kind of nice to do. Anyway, let's go back to our code. And to finish this, what you're going to do is you're going to make duplicates of these functions um, and event listeners and function pairs. And you're going to add in your feet, the stopping and playing the feet, and then stopping and playing all. Now, to do this, um, I'm going to just start to create the function for the foot. So we'll say function, this will be the stop feet. So to begin, what I need to do is find out what the first foot is called. So I'm going to find that movie clip. And I want to start at the main timeline. So let me pull this up just a little bit. The main timeline where I'm currently at. And then I need to find the name of that foot. And, uh, and I think that's it because I don't need to go inside of it. I just go inside of it the one time and I stop it. Then I can add another line for the next foot and the next foot and the next foot, each time changing the object that's being referenced to the instance name of the timeline that I'm trying to stop. So we can add as many things as we want to that function. And then, of course, um, with the play all, we also want to stop the Bilbo body itself and the pink hat and the tail. And the, the tail and the pink hat are individual movie clips that are inside the body. So that's going to be more like this particular targeting where we went inside the body and found the hat. So good luck. Let me know if you have any questions. And when you're done, go ahead and save it with a new name so you know that it's now done. Um, and publish your output, centering it and making it responsive. Thanks.